lot of people dislike them because they can be a bit cumbersome. But there is an exact step-by-step -step process that you go through every time. And as long as you follow those rules, you will be okay. This is, again, straight out of your book. To solve quadratic inequalities, meaning inequalities that have squares, x squared, we rewrite the inequality so that zero is on one side and everything else is on the other, just like when we solve quadratic equations. So step one for this, I need zero on one side, everything else on the other. For this example down here, I'm going to add eight to both sides so that I have a zero on one side of the inequality, everything else on the other. Find these zeros of f and place them on a number line with zero, um, <clears throat> with the number zero above them. Okay, so to find the zeros, now we're going to pretend for a second, so I'm going to go over here so I don't get this mixed up with my actual problem. Pretend like we're solving for zero. Well, how would this be equal to zero? So I take this, I'm going to put an equal sign there just to solve it. When you have x squared, you have several options for solving. You can either factor if it factors, you can use the quadratic formula if it does not factor. This, um, does it factor? Are there factors of 8 that add to equal negative 6? I believe there are. Uh, negative 4 and negative 2 add to equal negative 6, multiply to be a positive 8. I'm going to continue solving for my zeros. They setting each of those equal to 0. And I get that x is 4 and x is 2. So I've done step 2. I found my zeros. The next thing said to put them on a number line. So just put them on a number line in order, okay? 2 is less than 4, so we would want it to be at the lower end of the number line, 4 at the higher end. Okay, step 2, check. Now let's do step 3. Choose a real number called a test value in each interval. Okay, so we need to t pick a test value to the left of 2. I'm going to write the test values in red. Um, what's to the left of 2? Well, we can use 1. It's to the left of 2. Okay, that's my test value. We need a number between 2 and 4, so we can test that section to see if it's true or false. 3 is between 2 and 4, so that'll work perfectly. And we need a number bigger than 4. I'm going to go ahead and pick 5. You can pick any number as, actually, as long as it fits in the interval you're working with. Okay, our next job is to test that number, each of these numbers, and find out whether they're positive or negative in our quadratic function here. So if I were to test 1, I would have 1 squared minus 6 times 1 plus 8. Is that positive or negative? 1 minus 6 plus 8. Again, all we want to know is it positive or negative. Hopefully you got a positive 3. So this entire in interval here will give me positive values. Anything to the left of 2 would be positive. Not cool that we can just test one number and know what's going to happen on the entire rest of the number line? Okay, now we need to test the middle section between our zeros. We're going to use 3. So we put 3 into our function. So we have 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 8 gives us 9 minus 18 plus 8. Again, we're just worried about whether it's positive or negative. And we get negative 1. So this section, everything between 2 and 4, would give us a negative value if we plugged it in there. Let's do our finer, final interval over here. Um, everything greater than 4, our test subject is going to be the number 5. So we have 5 squared minus 6 times 5 plus 8. 5 squared is 25 minus 30 plus 8. Okay? Again, all we want to know is is that positive or negative. And we get that it is a positive number. Okay? So our integrals tell us that anything to the left of 2 would be positive. Anything between 3 and 4 would give us a negative, And anything to the right of 4 would be positive. Okay? Now let's see, determine the sign 
for each test value in step three. Write the sign. We did that. And our last step, choose the interval which corresponds to the correct sign to solve the inequality. So we have to look at our inequality. We wanted it to be less than zero. So negative numbers are less than zero. We want all of the intervals that were negative. We only had one, and it was this middle section here. So our answer is the interval from 2 to 4, not including 2 and 4, because it was just less than and not less than or equal to. You can write that answer in interval notation or with your sign. Okay. But you better get used to interval notation because it's going to stick around. Let's solve this inequality. So we don't have our steps right here in front of us, but let's think. Our first job was to get it equal 1, 0 on one side and everything else on the other. So I am going to subtract 2x from both sides. Check. I did step 1. Step 2, we want to set this be equal to zero and find the zeros by solving. Now, we again, our options are to factor or to use the quadratic e formula. <clears throat> In this case, it still factors. I could pull an x out and I would have x minus 2. I set each factor equal to zero and I solve. So I get x is zero and if I add 2 here, x is 2. I found my zeros. They are 0 and 2. Our next job was to put those on the number line. Okay. And again, you want to have them in order, smaller to larger. And we pick test points in each interval. So I need something less than 0. I'm going to use negative 1. Something between 0 and 2 let's say 1, and something bigger than 2, let's say 3. We test those in our inequality up here to see whether we get a positive or a negative value. Okay, so again, here was our inequality. We're going to plug in negative 1. We're going to test negative 1 first. Be very careful with parentheses and order of operations here. So we have negative 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. We end up with 3. So this interval is positive. In the middle, we have to test 1. We plug that in for our x. We have 1 squared minus 2 times 1. And we get 1 minus 2, or negative 1. So this middle interval is negative. Finally, something bigger than 2, we chose 3. You can pick anything bigger than 2, but I chose 3. 3 squared is 9, negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, and 9, 9, 6 is a positive number. So there's our intervals. We have a positive, negative, positive. Then we look back at our question and say, well, what did we want? We wanted our x squared minus 3, 2x, excuse me, to be greater than 0. What numbers are greater than 0? Okay, you look at your sign. We want it greater than x, greater than 0. Okay, um, those would be positive numbers. Where is our intervals positive? Here and here. So everything to the left of 0 or from negative infinity to 0, as we like to say. And we have another section. They have to be written separately. They're separate on our little number line. They have to be separate when we write them down. Starts at not 3, but 2 and goes to infinity. So here is our answer. Again, the steps we went through, we made sure 0 was on one side, everything else on the other. We solved that quadratic to find our zeros for 0 and 2. We put 0 and 2 on a number line and picked a number in each interval to test in our function to find whether it was positive or negative on each interval. And then we double-checked we wanted it to be greater than zero, so we wanted positive answers. Those intervals were less than zero and greater than two. <clears throat> All right, let's try this one. Our first step is to make sure zero is on one side and everything else is on the other. 
uh, check that's already done for us. Our next job is to find the zeros. So we take 2x squared plus 4, set it equal to 0, and try to solve. Uh, this does not factor. So let's try to solve it. There isn't an x, just an x squared. So we can try to take the square root to solve this problem. So we get the x squared by itself. This only works if there's not an x and just an x squared, OK? So don't try it if there's an x in there besides our x squared. We are going to divide both sides by 2. We get x squared equals negative 2. How do we get rid of an x squared? We take the square root of both sides and put plus or minus. But uh-oh, what did we get for our answer? The square root of negative 2. Well, we can't take the square root of negative 2. It's an imaginary number. So we don't have any zeros. So we can't put them on a number line and pick values to test. So what do we do then? Well, what this tells us is that there aren't any zeros. So our answer is either going to be no solution, or it's going to be all real numbers. There's two ways you can decide this. If I look at my original, notice I have 2 times x squared. Well, x squared will always come out as positive. Times positive 2 is positive. If I add a positive number, okay, I'm just getting a bigger number. Is it possible for that to be negative? It's not. Okay, so this is no solution. If you didn't understand that little rigmarole I just went through, your other option when you come up with no zeros is to just pick any number on the number line. Okay? Let's say I choose 1. And you test it in your function just to see what happens. If that one value comes up tr upright, then it's all real numbers for your solution. If it comes up not working, then it's no solution. And here, 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. 2 plus 4 is 6, a positive. So no matter what I put in here, I'm going to get a positive number. I go back up, and I look, and I wanted my value to be less than 0 negative, which is not going to happen. So my answer is no solution. So again, that happens if you solve and there are no real zeros. Test any number on the number line. If it comes up as working, then it's all real numbers for your solution. If it doesn't work, then it's no solution. Alrighty, here's yet another case. Okay, so let's go through our steps. We have our set steps. First thing we're supposed to do is get 0 on one side, everything else on the other. So I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. And I get x squared minus 4x plus 4. Now you're allowed to put those in any order you want. I put them with the x squared, the x, and then the number, just because that's the way we're used to looking at quadratics. Now we're supposed to find the zeros. So we set this equal to 0. And we go about solving that. Does it factor? Are there factors of 4 that add to be negative 4? Well, let's test it out. I think there might be. Does that work? Okay. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. Negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4. Perfect. We set each factor equal to 0 and solve. This is our basic steps for solving a quadratic if it factors. I get 2 both times. So I only have one solution, but I still go back and do what I was supposed to do. I put 2 on the number line. I pick numbers in each interval. This time I only have 2. I have to the left of 2 and to the right of 2 that I need to see what happens. Now, to the left of 2, and you may have deduced already what the answer is, but I'll go through the steps just in case that doesn't happen. Um, to the left of 2, I'm going to pick 1. Actually, I'm going to pick 0 because it's easier to plug in. And to the larger than 2, I'm going to pick 3. We put them into our function to test. If I put 0 into that, 0 squared minus 4 times 0 plus 4, I get 4. 
which is a positive number. So that interval is um, that interval is positive. Um, if I plug in 3, what happens? I get 3 squared minus 4 times 3 plus 4. 3 squared is 9. 4 times 3, that would be minus 12. And we have plus 4. Do we get a positive or a negative number when we evaluate that? I get a positive 1. Okay. Uh-oh, see, I have a positive in interval and a positive interval. So then I go back to my inequality and I say, what did they want? They wanted the value to be less than zero or equal to. Okay, at any point on this graph, um, do I have less than? Do I have any negative? I do not. Do I have any equal to? I do, right here at two. Okay. I didn't have any less than, okay, so that's out. Two is my only solution. Now, had these intervals been negatives and had satisfied what my inequality wanted, my answer would have been all real numbers. It did not, however, so my only solution to this problem is two.